What's going on guys? It's Eric from Intelligent Quads coming back at you with another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how we can use a VPN to make a virtual lab. And basically what our VPN is going to provide us is a secure and easy way to network our different devices, such as our simulation computers, our drones, our development computers, uh, anything that we would normally be able to communicate over a uh, private network, we're going to be able to communicate from anywhere in the world over our virtual private network. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So in order to create our virtual private network, we're going to need to set up a virtual private network server. And basically what this guy is going to do is he's going to take all the traffic that we're going to that's going to be coming in from either our drones or simulation computers or our development computers. And he's going to be encrypting them and routing them to routing the traffic to wherever it needs to go. And so in order to set up a virtual private network server, we're going to need a host that has a static IP. And in order to do this, I'm going to be using DigitalOcean, which will allow me to spin up a Linux node just for a small fee. So it's going to cost me $5 a month to host my um, virtual private network server, but there are a lot of different discount codes that you can use on the internet to get this down cheaper. If you come to the GitHub student developer pack, you can actually get $50 worth of DigitalOcean credits for free just by being a student and providing your um, student email. So that'll help bring down the cost of that. and. If it's $5 a month, that means you can host your server for 10 months. If you guys are not a student, then you guys can use my affiliate link, which will give you guys $100 worth of credits, but it will only be good for 60 days. So you're effectively gonna get two free months of hosting your virtual private network that way. So without further ado, let's go over to DigitalOcean and start setting up our virtual private network server. Okay, so now I'm on the DigitalOcean site and I've just logged in and you can see all the projects that I'm working on currently. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up a new project. So I'm going to do this by clicking new project and then I'm going to name this the VPN tutorial. And then I'm going to select the purpose for education and create the project. So now that I've created the project, I'm going to skip moving resources for now, and I'm going to go ahead and create a droplet. And I'm going to set that up with Ubuntu. I'm going to set the plan to basic. I'm going to set it to the $5 per month uh, option and New York should be fine. Um, and then I'm going to upload my SSH key so just that I can sign in. And for you guys, you guys will be doing a new SSH key or copying a current SSH key um, by doing this and pasting it there. Um, but I'm just gonna select the SSH key that I already have. And then, um, then I'm just gonna do one droplet uh, no tags and then create the droplet. So just give it a few minutes and it should spool up. All right, cool. So it looks like it's uh, spooled up. So now I should be able to SSH into the node and I'm going to do this by copying the IP address, opening up a terminal and then going SSH root and then at the IP address. And then I'll just select yes. And boom, I'm in my node. To install this VPN server, I'm gonna be using a simple uh, install script that makes it really easy to install the VPN server. I have linked a tutorial that shows you guys how to use the install script um, on the follow along, which is in the description. So let's go back to the follow along and then come down to um, installing OpenVPN and come to this tutorial. So the way that we're gonna do this is first, we're gonna make sure that our package manager is up to date. So for us, that's gonna be a sudo apt update. And once that's up to date, then we can go ahead and do this wget for this install script. Oops. And 
And now that we've got that, let's just make sure that we got the, the file permissions correct. And looks like it's not executable, so I'll do a ch mod uh, plus x and then the install script, which is open VPN install. So now I can go ahead and run the install script. So now I'm just gonna go follow prompts and um, follow the tutorial on what to choose for these. So I'll be choosing the static IP, which is the first one. So that'll be a one. And I'm gonna be using UDP because that's way faster than TCP. And I'm just gonna use the default port and This guy recommends to use the uh, Google DNS. So that's what I'll go ahead and do, which is two. And I'm going to name the first client, which I'm going to use from a desktop, um, desktop. And press enter. and boom, the OpenVPN server should now be running. So if we do an if config, oh, but first install if config by using NetTools, we should see this ton pop up, which basically means that the VPN is now working. Also, you should notice that when we were setting it up, it, it asked for a client. And what that actually did was create a file that we can use on our client side. So on the, on the desktop to route our traffic through the VPN. So, and you guys can see that file just by doing an LS here, which is the desktop.ovpn. So for the following demonstration, I'm also going to generate another open VPN um, certificate. So to do that, I'm going to just do a dot slash open VPN install again and uh, select add a new client. And I'm going to name this laptop. And boom, now I have a file from a laptop and a file from my desktop. And I'm going to use these files to network my two computers together um, so that my laptop can access the resources of my desktop from anywhere in the world. So let's go ahead and copy these files back to my desktop such that uh, we can work on installing them. So to copy them, we're just gonna do a simple SCP uh, of the files from the server to my desktop. And now laptop. For the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to use the files that we just downloaded um, on Ubuntu 20.04. So the simplest way is to just use the graphical unit user interface to add the VPN file. So to do that, just go ahead and go to your settings and then go to networking. And then come to networking and um, click the add button and then import from file and then we're going to use the um, desktop.openvpn uh, file that we just downloaded. And to connect to the VPN, it's just as simple as turning this on. So you should see that you're connected to the VPN by seeing this little VPN uh, sign in the top right corner. Boom, okay, so now let's go ahead and do this for the laptop. So I'm gonna just uh, email the VPN file from my laptop to myself. You can move the file any which way you want, thumb drive, email, Slack, whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and move that over to my laptop and I'll see you guys there. All right guys, so now I'm on my laptop and I'm gonna show you guys how we can connect to the OpenVPN server using the terminal this time. So in order to do that, we're gonna first go ahead and install OpenVPN by just doing a sudo apt install OpenVPN.
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to CD to where I downloaded my OpenVPN uh, file and that's in downloads. So I'm just going to CD to downloads. And then I'm going to run it sudo openvpn dash dash config and then my openvpn file. And it looks like now I'm connected and I can verify this by running an if config and checking my ton IP address. And it looks like I've got the uh, IP address 10.8.0.3 on my VPN link. So now I'm going to do the last tutorial, but I'm going to do the networking over my VPN. So sit back and relax and enjoy this little demonstration. see the interface in Gazebo Web through our VPN, just put in the VPN address of our desktop and then 8080. And boom, looks like it's there. Now I can set the mode to guide it and fly the drone. Boom, now I can control my desktop simulation computer from anywhere in the world. This is such a powerful tool that's really going to allow roboticists a, another dimension and allow them to work from anywhere in the world. All right, so I also wanted to show you guys that what we just did is actually multi-platform. So even though we're running our simulation on a Ubuntu desktop, we can actually control and do development from a Windows machine. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can connect our Windows machine to our VPN and then how we can use the uh, the simulation to do development work from a Windows machine. So let's go ahead and take a look at the download for the OpenVPN client by coming to this link. You guys will have to bear with me because this is a really cruddy laptop that I got for free. Come down to the Windows section and download the client. And then we'll just go ahead and run the setup once that comes available. Okay guys, because my laptop's super, super crappy, I think I lost some of the footage of me installing OpenVPN, but the install is like super easy. All I have to do is just pretty much uh, select next and okay, and you end up getting this installed. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to import the VPN file just as we did before, but on Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit browse and select the laptop OpenVPN that I generated earlier and then hit add and connect. So it looks like we're connected. So now we should be able to go to our browser and connect to our desktop via our VPN link. Okay, so let's go to 10.8.0.2.8080 to see the simulation. We'll just give it a couple seconds to load. And while it does that, let's go ahead and open up our command prompt. And then we'll go ahead and SSH to our desktop. And we'll be able to fly as soon as the EKF starts using GPS, just as uh, before. And as you can see, we can see the simulation from our um, browser in Windows, just as we've seen it in the past. So it looks like we can fly now. And boom, now we can see our drone taken off in our simulation through our browser. And the uh, performance of this is actually quite amazing, especially considering that the laptop that I'm currently using only has two gigs of RAM and is an i3 processor from like 10 years ago. So 
basically the tools that we've learned in the last two tutorials are super, super powerful. We can basically use a powerful desktop machine from anywhere in the world, from any laptop, from any operating system, no matter the specs or the environment or the network. Hope this really helps you guys with our pandemic situation. And I just want you guys to smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one.